inspires you as an artist? As an artist? Um, I'm kind of the inspiration comes from a lot of different places. Um, but like I'm I'm really inspired by like just like the resilience of like black people and women in particular. So like when I think about um, all of the people that I've inspired they've like had to deal with like a certain amount of struggle. Um, and so like when I think about art and like what that means to me, my art at least for me, like, I, I want to continue to, like, build and, like, try to tell the story of those that um, are struggling. Because, like, sometimes you just get so stuck in the struggle um, and you, you can't see beyond it um, until, like, somebody captures the story. Yeah. Um, it humanizes you. It humanizes you and, like, you know. Kind of let you know that you're struggling, you're not struggling alone. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's inspiring to me. Problem is inf- inspiring to me. Um, like, I love the sound of all of my love walking down. When it's 125th Street and, like, all of the colors, all of the, the, the scent, like, um, yeah, the graffiti, like, all of that is inspiring to me. I think relationships. Yeah, but I think that that's that's the one thing about like Tommy I love is that we can go down the street and maybe it's just like true for all of New York, but I think that especially in Harlem, you can see so many kinds of relationships mm-hmm. between people. Yeah. Like whether it's just like a conversation of people just walking mm-hmm. or like uh just sitting on the stools and it's 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 interesting to like eavesdrop on oh, all the fabulous. It's the best. Is it the best? Even if they're like, if it's one person and they're talking on the phone, mm-hmm. it's the presence of the other person is still there, even though like you really cannot see them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or really hear them. Yeah. 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 You, just, you just know, you can find out so much about that person mm-hmm. without like knowing it. Yeah. You can hear it. Yeah. So it's definitely And I also, I think that part of that comes from like, it being just like a community where it's just like it's not even really like you can't be like oh we just being those. It's just it's just they're just being tapped in and tuned with the environment. Mm-hmm. So it's not really about being nosy. It's just about like there's something humanizing about that where it's just like you know, can you can recognize another individual through sound, through mm-hmm. through sight. Mm-hmm. And then it's like talk. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Every column has like a beat, right? Ah, uh, a flow. Uh, yeah, a beat. That's just like specific to. I mean, I guess every every city, every like neighborhood has its own beat um, and rhythm. But like the drums to me in Harlem are loud, mm-hmm. like loud and like like channeling like ancestors, like yeah. that type of like. Um, be in Harlem. Yeah. So, in the language, you know, yeah. language, and like how it's like, it's kind of like, kind of sound like you're from Harlem, or you're like, oh, you act like you're from Harlem, you're like, what's the name? <laughs> <laughs> and then I used to like, remember from Brooklyn, I'm like, yo, you mad at Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Like, you get it. Yeah. You get it. Yeah. Yeah. But I love, I love it here. I absolutely love Harlem. I feel like, um, there's always like something to explore, um, and I feel like I've learned, I've been able to learn so much about myself being here in Harlem, and just like the connections that I've made with folks, and like the willingness of people in Harlem to like look out for you, yeah, um, and you know, and, it, it, back. and have your back, and like want to see you win. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's 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 so. This is just like sometimes you go other places, like if I go other places, I miss Harlem. I miss Harlem yeah. because it's just like I'm not used to being in an environment where I don't have support continuously. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that even like, even though I like went to school like on 14th Street, mm-hmm. I like still, it was rough because it was just like it was a different environment where it was kind of competitive. Mm-hmm. And in Harlem, it's just like, 
you do your best, but you do your best so that you can improve your community. Uh -huh. You know, you can like have something to offer to the community. So even though it's like your best, your it's your best to benefit everyone, mm -hmm. and that's why you do your best so right. that everyone can can benefit and learn together collectively. Right. Um, so you're from Harlem, right? Yes. Um, and it's interesting because I I was saying to you earlier that like um, you're really young and like for me I'm kind of new to to even like really considering myself an artist. Mm -hmm. um, and you like I'm I'm wondering like what your journey was like, what your experience was like, um, and like what type of support you had um, coming up in terms of like growing into your artistry. Um, well, I don't know if I could say I had it easy, but my mom is an artist, mm -hmm. so I think definitely when you have a parent that's an artist, like, being an artist isn't different. Like, it's not like a different thing, it's kind of like just a way of life, and like, it's your personality, it's who you are, it's your being. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, my mom used art to raise my sister and I, mm -hmm. um, whether it was, like, drawing out our feelings or um, disciplining us. Mm -hmm. I know, like, for example, like, I had a thing for drawing on walls, and then my mom was like, oh, you want to draw on walls? You have to you have to do the whole entire wall, mm -hmm. and I better not see a white space. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to cover everything. And that broke me in to, like, I didn't draw on walls after that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I thought you were going to say I was creating. Oh, oh, no, no, I did. I did do that, but I saw the amount of work that it took right. to, like, actually do that. Then it was just, like... And she was like, if you do this, you're going to have to just do the whole entire apartment. And it just, yeah, and it became so overwhelming. Yeah. It was just like, all right, I get it, right. you know. Right. It, which is, it was, it it disciplined me to not draw on walls, but it also educated me to how much work it takes to actually, like, do work and, mm -hmm. and as an artist. I think a lot of times people are just like, oh, art is so free. But, mm -hmm. like, to be an artist, you have to be very disciplined mm -hmm. and and. and careful with your time yeah. and there's just so much that goes into it that I think a lot of people think it's just magical mm -hmm. and I, I guess I can see how it's magical but it really it really yeah. isn't the yeah. thought everything yeah but I had like my mom supporting and creating around me too I think it was just hard not to create and mm -hmm. be around her because she like she's not from Harlem she came from Cleveland Ohio back in like the um 80s um, and she came to Harlem to teach art mm. um, because there was like a, at the time, there was like a, a drought of like art programs. Yeah. And so that's what she came, like that was her way into the community. And, and because I feel like she had, she was offering something that they needed. Mm. Um, they really were very open to her. And plus she was like a mother, yeah. a single parent mother. And I, and I find that Harlem is very welcoming of Good. like mothers. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. And elders that like they see her and just be like look, you need help, let me help you. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was that was the way in which she knew that this could be a home for her yeah. and her her family. Yeah. So um, and then yeah, so like I used to go to her art classes with her, like <laughs> it's like every day. And so because it's, it's interesting because I feel like, like it was just like they but like I feel like the community engagement was a little bit better yeah experiences of like interacting with the community through her um, that just gave me a, a, an incredible amount of comfort mm -hmm. and like being mm -hmm. an artist and being natural at it. Even like community members like, oh yeah, y'all artists. Yeah. Like, you know, so we, we were recognized as that. Mm -hmm. um, so really it was just like, it was like, I feel like if I would have gone a different route, people would have been like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, like they would, like they would have been like, <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's funny because it's just like, yeah, like. It was just like. How could you choose anything else? Yeah, the you path know. Was kind of already. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the beautiful thing about the community is if I would have chosen a different route, they, they would have supported right. me. Um, yeah, because at one point I was thinking about law school. Really? Yeah, like when I was, I had a thing for because I wanted to change the world, and I was like, oh, in order to change the world, I should be a lawyer because yeah. we need more black lawyers. And I went to this like 
like some institute for the gifted program and mm -hmm. they had like opportunities for like children to introduce you to law at from like a teenage preteen and then you keep going through the program and then hopefully by the time like you know you go into um college you have like a foundation in law yeah um and i was doing that and i was like i had to leave my community for that which was uh, kind of shaky. Yeah. Um, where was it? It was at, they had it at Vassar College. Okay. So I had to go to Poughkeepsie and I was one of a few black kids, you know, that whole thing. <laughs> um, but, um, and then I think that when I went to high school, I did, I did drift for a while. I was, I, was not, I went to art high school, I went to fashion industries high, fashion industries high school. Mm -hmm. And, and I don't know, it's like I had a lot of people in my ear and it was just, I got, I got confused for a minute, a slight minute, and then my mom just came and, you know, I remember we went out for, like, sweets and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and so she just sat me down, she was like, look, like, you have to be your own person, you mm -hmm. know, you have to tune everybody out, and you need to decide based on what you want, because right. it's your life, you don't have to live it, you have to sit with yourself, yeah. and you don't want to, you know, regret it. And I think that another thing about it is, is that the money, right? Like, artists are just yeah. like... Oh my God! I'm yeah. gonna become a struggling artist, and I'm not. I don't know if that was too much of my worry, where it's just like lawyers make bank, you know. Yeah. But I think that as an artist, I don't know. Like you can make bank as an artist too, but it's just something it's a different. different. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's funny because like that's one of the things that um, kind of scared me away from being an artist, um, mainly because like when you grow up, like for me, like growing up with out a lot of money um like the last thing i want to do is like it's struggle is struggle yeah um not that like i value struggle um but i think that like living, there's that fear there. yeah there's that fear of like living your your whole entire life struggling um and like i i can recall being young um and like working on mural projects and loving it or like being in high school and putting together like production and loving it and, and them being like extremely well received. Mm -hmm. Um and I, you know, and like just naturally like gravitating towards music but choosing um choosing to like try to do, ignore that quiet it down. And... Well not even quiet it down, but like do the business side of music. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so in doing that, like I spent years of being in the music industry and my time there kind of like left me with like it sucked me dry of like my love for the art form mm -hmm. um and so when i realized like that was happening i was like i have to i have to get out like there's no i mean that was like one of the things that saved me like mm -hmm. when i was growing up so uh, getting to the point where you can't enjoy it or yeah. you can't you don't have love for it anymore love for like the creative mm -hmm. um anymore is, is is tough um so yeah, this has been like a, a really interesting transition, but I, I can say that like my time in Harlem, you know, what brought me to Harlem, partly being like my roots, like my great grandfather was, great great grandfather was a part of the Harlem Renaissance. Um, and when I first got to Harlem, um, I would go to Abio Boone's in the last poet's house um, often. So like every Sunday he has, um, Folks come by for open house. Um, mm -hmm. There's just be a bunch of poets, um, just a bunch of like really creative folk um, building and like trying out their poems on on everybody in the room. Um, and it was just like a community that was already there that I was able to kind of like tap into. Um, and to me, that like speaks to to what Harlem is and like why I choose to like stay in Harlem and why I feel like Harlem is more of a home to me than anywhere else I've ever been, mm -hmm. including where I'm from mm -hmm. or where I was born. Um, so yeah, I mean, but it's, it's, it's interesting like that difference between, or like that tug, that tug of war between like being financially stable and being an artist, like there has to be an either or. Um, but I'm like really interested in creating <laughs> Mm -hmm. a situation where it doesn't have to be an either or yeah. like you know because art is the baseline of, of this country's culture like but and the culture is the is the money yeah. right yeah um and so in, in humanity i don't yeah. think i think that 
um, artists play such a crucial role mm-hmm. in societies. Mm-hmm. Like even when you study like history, it's just like like art can save lives. Yeah. Art can also corrupt lives. <laughs> like it's just it's just like art has so much power. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know who remember. I think it was oh yes, Toni Morrison was saying like you know being an artist can be a very dangerous yeah. job. Yeah. Um, because you you're literally like I'm definitely paraphrasing, but you you introduce perception to people. Yeah. Like you introduce how people can perceive things mm-hmm. and receive. You know, it's just you, you you hold a lot of power. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and because of that, you can either be attacked for it, mm-hmm. um, and people will come for you because they understand that you have the power to, like, I don't want to say invade someone's thinking, but to to to, to shift in, in some ways to shift some yeah to shift folks thinking to like um, even like mobilize people yeah right and so um, like one of the things we, we talked about like collective struggle and um, you know like I'm also an organizer um, and trying to find my voice in that mm-hmm. um, and I think a movement without art is not a movement at all like you're not moving like yeah um, and so just trying to find ways within this current moment that we're in mm-hmm. um, to be able to like utilize art to, to um, make folks feel comfortable about speaking out and mm-hmm. telling their stories um, or being, and like challenging systems and being innovative. Mm-hmm. I think that artists have to be innovative, especially when you're dealing with movements, because I mean, like, you have to find new ways to buck the system because right. they are already gonna know. They're gonna know. Oh, okay. they they're gonna do this like this, and you gotta X, be you gotta be three steps ahead of the mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's when innovation comes into play, where it's just like you leave them three steps behind at least. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, we did a good job. I don't know if we're gonna ask more questions. Okay, hold on. Wait. So we got these things that just fly out of the light. Um yeah, I feel you. But like what are some of your your fears when it comes to like either your power as an artist or um just being an artist in general? Like in the words of the as an artist, I think that, um, it's just like really kind of live, you know, and, you know, there's so many artists out there, you see it all the time, and mm-hmm. it's just like, you can see the work before, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. someone offered them that nice check, and it afterwards. Yeah. Um, I just think to tend to, being an artist and a tendency leader is like, not about my ego, but yeah. really about the people mm-hmm. and the people I'm trying to serve. And yeah. I think that my fear is like my art becoming an egotistical mm-hmm. like rant yeah. versus like a community. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't want to be individualistic, but it's about me. Mm-hmm. And like, when my art becomes a thing that I'm trying to bring attention to myself, and yeah. not necessarily particularly an issue or that I share with other folks. Yeah. Just, you know. yeah, it it happens a lot. Yeah. yeah, it happens a lot. Um, I like I agree. That's like one of one of my fears as well. It's just like not. I think for me, it's like not. I feel like there's so like you hold so much power with somebody's story. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like the stories that I tend to gravitate to are like dealing with like trauma in some way. Mm-hmm. Um. And so, like, just wanting to ensure that I'm responsible, completely yeah. responsible with, like, book stories. Yeah. Um, not telling it wrong. Not, that's what I'm saying. Not, <laughs> not, telling, not telling it wrong, not walking in with any type of, like, agenda and yeah. just allowing the story, like, allowing somebody's story to, like, be told for what it is. Um, yeah. and, and how it is, and for them to, like, be proud of it. Yeah. That's why I think another thing is often like because I work a lot around like tone and it's just like how do I take something to that like, mm-hmm. and turn it into something beautiful mm-hmm. without lying about it. Mm-hmm. Um without like because I don't want to cover it. Yeah, it's like, I don't want to cover this up. Like for the yeah. purpose of slavery, like um when I did my collection my fashion collection around slavery and it was just like everyone was just like that is such like a very 
sit at this time. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, when I was doing research, like, when you, just the mentality of it, right. just studying it, it's just like, and this is next time I found myself crying. I just like, I don't even know how I'm supposed to make something beautiful out of this. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I don't want people to be traumatized by looking at this. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at people who need to quit my people. Right. Like the right. people who are already experiencing trauma from the experience. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting because I was having a conversation today um, with uh, some other filmmakers about this like culture of sharing, um, sharing like, like cops or folks brutalizing black bodies mm -hmm. um, and like how that plays into like our mental health to see each other and, to, and, and a lot of the times like when I look at a black person I see myself yeah. and so it's like looking at myself being brutalized and brutalized and brutalized and brutalized and like not wanting to it's so easy to like just go for that right yeah. Um, but like, find, wanted to, wanted to find creative ways to like not not inflict pain well, on yeah. us over and over again. Yeah. You know, but to to still be able to tell the story for what it is. Yeah, the truth. Mm -hmm. It's just like I I definitely think that like just took so many years and it was just like. I'm not interested in lying about that. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in no. pulling up all those horrible details. Mm -hmm. And they're very horrible. They're very horrible. Mm -hmm. like, and some of them sort of like, if you can imagine it, it probably yeah. happened. Yeah. And it's just like, well, well how, 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 how traumatic can you go? And if you start thinking about it, mm -hmm. it's your mind could go pretty far. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's and it's just like, but it's just like, but at the same time, it's just like, Often, when you, like, when you show things, it's like all your comments coming from like black right? people. Like, that was really hard for them to see. I don't want to see anyone else for anything. Yeah. I don't want to, I, but it's yeah. just like, like, that needs to be told because mm -hmm. it has to be told. Right. But how do we tell it without the black folks? Yeah, forcing you know? black folks to, to relive that in a way yeah. that is like kind of too traumatizing for mm -hmm. so, Yeah, I agree. One thing that also like it doesn't say it takes a lot of work on the people side, mm -hmm. like in terms of like to be criminalizing our brain to a point where it's just like, you know, I mean I don't want to be on any of those if they say anything bad about the brain mm -hmm. or or feel like embarrassed. Mm -hmm. It was never and I and that's the thing I don't like it was just like this isn't embarrassing for us. Right. We right. should not be the one to embarrass. Right. But right. there's always been like the victim always should also take responsibility. Mm -hmm. Whereas the person that's inflicting the crime right. just should just go free. Like, yeah. the, 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 the victim is the one that sits with the heavy burden. Mm -hmm. It's just like how do we release that burden? Yeah. Like, Y'all get this mm -hmm. Right. Right. Like, right. You know? right. Um, it's interesting because I like I think that's one of the the beautiful things about art to me is that like um it just has the power to like create conversation or like kind of break the, the awkward silence or like the uncomfortable moments of um if it you know if it's done right yeah, yeah. um you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's just nothing to do. I have something to share. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. Yeah. This happened to me. And it's yeah. like, it's not about being ashamed, you know? It's, it's about knowing that there's, again, there's a collective struggle. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, we have, we have, like, all of the power in us to be able to push through. Mm -hmm. um, and fight. I, we, we have been fighting for a very long time, and I don't think that, like, we fought that much to, like, give up, you know? I don't think that we have to remember that this specific black and white thing here right now, yeah. like, this is, like, tells you that you can
the only way I would feel comfortable taking that picture was, would, would be to have that conversation and to be out in the streets and actually talking and like pulling things out of folks. So like somebody could say to me like I am if I'm asking a question about uh, being being correct why being harassed by the police, um, they can say to me because I was standing outside. But I had no reason to stand outside. Well, I, I shouldn't have been standing outside anyways. But then to like further that conversation and say, why can't you stand outside? Everybody else is standing outside. Like what 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 makes you feel like you don't have the right to like occupy space? Um, and so like after that conversation, being able to take a picture with someone who whose mindset was like I was standing outside and the answer is still the same, right? I got harassed because I was standing outside. But like your mentality and, and your feeling about standing outside has shifted. Yeah. Um, I think it's like I think it's important. I think there are folks that are, are doing that type of work um, outside of like the Black Lives Matter, like within um, the Black Lives Matter movement that are doing like a great job with it. Um, and it takes time. And it's like it's you know folks are busy. Folks have a lot going on. People don't want to stop and talk to you um, sometimes, but how do you reach those people? Yeah. Sure that the narrative of the 